Now that we've talked about the main cells of the nervous system, let's get going on some of the big details of it. And we're going to start with the human brain, which looks something like this. Now, one thing to notice here, and this is a drawing, so it may not be super crystal clear what I'm showing here, but I'll show it in a in subsequent images, is that the brain is composed of a number of is composed of convolutions or contours on the surface of the brain to give it more surface area. These convolutions or contours are gyri. Gyrus is singular, gyri is plural. So all of these are gyri. The lines between them make up the sulci. Sulci is plural, sulcus is singular. So this is one single sulcus right here. This is a sulcus here, that is a sulcus. So the outer part of the brain surface is composed of gyri that are separated by sulci. Now we can also split the brain up into different regions known as lobes. And I need to back up and say the brain collectively is composed up of three large regions, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. Cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem. So everything colored right here is representing the cerebrum, specifically the left cerebral hemisphere, because they're, both hemispheres are split down the middle by the longitudinal sulcus, and we'll take a look at that. Right here in black and white, the stripes here represents the cerebellum. There are also two cerebellar hemispheres, and this region right here in gray represents the brainstem, and the inferiormost aspect of it actually is not even the brainstem, it's the beginning of the spinal cord. So if we were going to divide up the cerebral hemispheres, we would have five lobes. Here we can see four lobes. In blue, frontal lobe. In yellow is the parietal lobe. Pink right here is the occipital lobe. And in green is the temporal lobe. The fifth lobe, which is the insula, cannot be seen from an exterior view. You would actually have to pull back the temporal lobe and look in this little gap right here where this dark line is, which is called the lateral sulcus. The lateral sulcus separates the temporal lobe from both the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe, just like this black line here, which represents the central sulcus, otherwise known as the fissure of Rolando, that separates the parietal lobe from the frontal lobe. And then separating the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe is the parietal occipital sulcus or fissure. Here we can see both an anterior view and a posterior view of the brain. This is the anterior view. This is a posterior view running right down the middle of the cerebral hemispheres is the longitudinal sulcus or longitudinal fissure. We can see that posteriorly as well. And we can see it splitting the cerebellar hemispheres in two. If we look over here on the left side, this is the right frontal lobe, left frontal lobe, left temporal lobe, and right temporal lobe. This right here represents part of the brain stem known as the pons. Right here represents the medulla oblongata and the most inferior aspect of it is the spinal cord, which to be clear is not part of the brain stem. If we look at this image right here, the main thing I wanna point out is this structure right here in yellow known as the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum are horizontal fibers that connect the right and left cerebral hemispheres to each other and will allow them to communicate with each other. And here we can have it see a better look at these convolutions or gyri of the cerebral hemisphere. In between them, once again, in dark are the sulci. Cerebellum, pons, down here is the medulla oblongata. This represents the midbrain, and I'll cover that in a subsequent image. Okay, so here we are. We are now looking at the left cerebral hemispheres, left cerebellar hemisphere, and the brainstem. Right here is the corpus callosum, which I pointed out previously. This right here represents the fornix, which also helps connect the right and left cerebral hemispheres. 
cerebellum. Now let's take a look at the brainstem. The brainstem includes, depending on what book or lecture you are listening to, but we're going to suggest it includes the diencephalon, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. So immediately inferior to the fornix in this region right here is the diencephalon. One thing to point out coming off the diencephalon inferiorly is the pituitary gland, and that is connected to the diencephalon via this stalk right here known as the infundibulum. So once again, back to the brainstem is the diencephalon, which is right here, the midbrain, right here, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. Once again, the most inferior or posterior in this image aspect of this is the spinal cord. So where it starts to taper down, we now we refer to that as the spinal cord.